As I've said before, Marvel's post-endgame world, aka Phase 4, is a directionless cash grab done so lazily with each film or TV show feeling more like an item of a production line than a finely crafted movie, like the Infinity Saga. With the exception of No Way Home, of course. Thor has had quite a journey and we've seen him constantly progress as a character from selfish Norse god to hero, leader, and ultimately king by the end of Ragnarok. Infinity War Thor was the combination of all we'd seen before. He became a calm, calculating, determined fighter who'd set his life on the line to protect innocent lives no matter the personal cost. A true Asgardian warrior, his arc was complete. Marvel decided to make him the butt of the jokes in Endgame. Dude, what do you think is coursing through my veins right now? She's whiz. Banking in on Ragnarok's reinvention of his character by adding humor and making him more likable, we got Thor Love and Thunder, the first, fourth standalone film in the MCU. Going in, I had very low expectations, wanting a good story and the redemption of Endgame Thor. That didn't go so well. The basic gist of the film is this. Gore, following the death of his daughter, seeks to annihilate all gods after being shown that his god is a selfish asshole and everything he put his faith into wasn't real. Meanwhile, Thor, finding himself, after partaking in many adventures with the Guardians of the Galaxy, learns of Gore's plans and tries to stop him with the help of a cancer-stricken Jane Foster who now wields Mjolnir, possessing the power of Thor. Valkyrie and Korg also tag along. Plot-wise, there are some very strong narrative elements that, if taken more seriously, could have made an incredible story. A praying father losing his daughter to the elements, finding out his faith meant nothing, death and how it forges a person's last days, the concept of mortality with life after death, loss of loved ones and the meaning of being a hero, the gods' abandonment of humankind. I mean, everything was perfect to make a sort of Greek tragedy. It could have had comedic elements, of course. I mean, Taika Waititi made Jojo Rabbit, one of the best films of the decade, intertwining comedy and tragedy in such a perfect way. In Love and Thunder, though, everything, and I mean everything, is played for laughs. The few serious scenes we have are all undercut by bland, silly gags, not letting any of its weight hit the audience. For example, Thor and Jane finally talk about her health leaving Thor to realize that the one love he just gained back is eventually going to leave him in a dreadful way. Cut to Korg and Valkyrie singing karaoke and making jokes on how to have babies. It's like that throughout the whole film. In the end, you have next to none emotional attachment to anything that's happening and just want it to be over. The script doesn't help either, with things the writers just pull out of their ass, creating huge problems in the MCU just for spectacle each element existing in a vacuum with no regard to the rest of the film, and even worse, the universe. Scenes go on for too long just for gags that lead nowhere and cringe-worthy dialogue so on the nose, it's like your parent is holding your hand to cross the street, but you're 21. Laughable exposition and stupid decisions by characters. The audience is constantly told things they already know and the pacing is terrible, giving you no sense of urgency or stakes. Character-wise, Gore felt genuinely menacing at times with an outstanding performance by Christian Bale, ending up ultimately wasted. They establish who he is and why he does what he does in the first two minutes, which I think are a highlight of the film. Then he goes against character for no established reason and his goal of killing the gods ends up making zero sense by the last scene. He could have easily taken on and murdered the gods if it wasn't for plot. The filmmaking was more tell than show for him. Out of James Gunn's and the Russo brothers' hands, I don't think the Guardians of the Galaxy belong in the MCU. Taika just gives you boring hollow shells of the characters you know and love for a combined four minutes of screen time, if I'm being generous. Russell Crowe's Zeus can be summed up in two words, insufferable asshole. Every line out of him is treated as a joke, constantly talking about organizing orgies and taking nothing seriously. I mean, even his demeanor feels like an insult to any other Zeus incarnation you've seen. Jane Foster had some good elements going for her. She wasn't a fully developed hero and had to ask Thor for help on how to act like one. Although, after her opening scene, you clearly don't understand why she is worthy to wield Mjolnir apart from the half-assed reasons the writer give us mid-movie. 
Natalie Portman bounced well off Hemsworth in her performance, shining mostly in the very few scenes of her struggling against her disease. Valkyrie and Korg could have been cut out of the film entirely, having zero contribution to the plot, except gags. Tessa Thompson's signature bland acting range couldn't make me invested in her even if there was a gun pointed to my head. And Taika Waititi's Korg was just a way to insert himself in the film out of self-indulgence. Thor himself was a mixed bag, it didn't move his character forward in any way, and was more of a regression. His arc was basically becoming a leader, but we'd already seen him become one in the past movies, so there was nothing to be invested in. Hemsworth, as always with the Thor movies, gives a great performance in a product that's ultimately style over substance. The music was just there to make fight scenes look cool and give you the 80s vibes, mostly with Guns N' Roses being played throughout, no narrative element as to why Guns N' Roses, except a throwaway line from Heimdall's son, Astrid, who wants to be called Axel because of, well you guessed it, Guns N' Roses. Keep in mind, it is a film about Thor. He doesn't get outshined, which I appreciated, and the rest of the cast is supporting, kind of like Toby and Andrew in No Way Home. The CGI can range from okay to Oh man, I can't believe this made the final cut. Characters constantly feel like they're on green screen, recording their lines alone, taking you out of the film many times, although the costume design was great and worked in the context of the story. Did I enjoy this film? No. Apart from some nice visuals, there wasn't anything to enjoy, and the meaning of love and thunder is so predictable it'll leave you disappointed. It feels like a movie written by a kid for kids. Imagine all of Ragnarok's gags, doubled but unfunny, and repeated throughout, feeling like scenes spliced together with no real thought just to make a movie. Remember the theater sequence in Ragnarok? This whole movie experience is basically that, more of a parody than a genuine story. In the end, Thor Love and Thunder was a mess of a film that I don't think anyone should waste their precious time on. Frustrating because the narrative elements for a good story and seasoned actors to play the roles are there. Sadly, even turning off your brain to try and consume it will end up in boredom. Thor Love and Thunder. What a joke.